Okay, so in my last video, I mentioned that I am just now finished with my second year of the PhD program. Yay! So it's summer, right? So that means I get to relax, go to the beach, and not worry about anything until August, right? Wrong. Even though I don't have classes anymore, I have to prepare for a really big milestone called the comprehensive exam. This is what you have to take in order to transition from being a doctoral student to a doctoral candidate. And this is an opportunity for you to show your committee that you have what it takes to be an independent researcher. It's also an opportunity to show that you're not just someone who can consume research and take it, you actually are able to look at it critically and critique it. Technically, we've been practicing this for the last two years as we are reading a lot of articles in our seminars. It's a different story when you're doing it solo. The onus is on you to be able to not only critique and make connections across the literature, it's also on you to be able to articulate those connections to people who do not live in your brain. And that's the scariest part for me because I think weird sometimes, I just do. That's just something that I've always experienced in my life. I have to be very intentional about how I communicate my ideas because if I just take the first draft in my head, it is all jumbled and I get really quizzical looks on people's faces when they look at me and it's kind of uncomfortable. So I have to prepare. And one of the sub milestones that I have to prepare for right now in preparation for the comprehensive exams is putting together my reading list. The way it works for my school is I have to put together a list of about hundred papers across three different topics that allow me to go deep into these topics. What's gonna happen for me is the committee is going to look over the papers and come up with questions for me to be able to write to a couple months from now. So I'm in this interesting place right now because I'm trying to target my three topics. I have two that I know I really want to do. I'm really interested in what's called symbolic management in the strategy and organizational theory literature. And this is tied to a lot of the things I've noticed working in in the corporate space. I'm really sensitive to what executives say in their earnings calls and what brands say in their ads. Because I've had a lot of experience in dozens of organizations, large and small, I realized that what organizations say and what they do on the inside don't always match up. I have been on this fact-finding mission to try to figure out what constructs in the literature is talking about this phenomena. And I have looked at a whole bunch of things from cognitive dissonance, which doesn't necessarily match, but that's where I started, to virtue signaling, which is pretty close. And I've landed on symbolic management. And the reason why I really like this topic is because it really centers in the highest level of corporate governance. So you're talking about the boards, the CEOs, and how they interact with the financial community and other CEOs across the industry or the business landscape. And that just speaks to my brain. I really love research that I can tie to my business experience. And I think that that makes it easier for me as I think about being an MBA professor, I want my students to be able to apply my research to all of the companies that they're gonna grow up and run. That's just, that's my dream, you know, 15 years from now. 15 years. Okay, anyway, we're here right now. Right now, I have to look at the literature of symbolic management and pick a good representation of articles for me to dive into. I'm talking about understanding the theoretical premise, understanding what the central arguments are in the literature and understanding where are the gaps that I ultimately may want to fill one day. So that's my first topic. My second topic has to do with emotion. And I have to tell you, before I started this journey, I did not consider myself even remotely an emotion scholar. But the more I look into the world of work from a research lens, and the more I see how people show themselves at work and how they make sense of everything around them, it's pretty undeniable that emotion is all up in that mix. And I genuinely think that if we can create experiences that generate positive emotions, we can create generative experiences that are mutually beneficial for employees and organizations. And so when I think about my core mission for my research in that I'm going to be able to fundamentally make work better, 
I think that understanding how emotions work, particularly in team settings, could be really valuable. Now the thing about emotions, that's a big, big topic. I need to narrow the scope a little bit because I'm not gonna be able to absorb the entire canon of emotions research in the span of three months. So I'm centering on emotions on teams, particularly emotion contagion. It's this whole idea that you can kind of catch somebody else's emotions. So if someone's pretty sour, that's gonna bring the mood down on the team. Conversely, if someone is really enthusiastic and energetic, that has the possibility of positively infecting other people in the team to kind of bring that morale up. So I'm really excited to dive more into that and find what the conversations are and see how I can use that for my future research. Those two, I'm pretty set on. I'm really excited on it. But my third topic, I don't know. I, I have a lot of different options that I'm trying to really explore. I know I have the option to split lists, but I'm really trying to exercise a little bit of discipline with this because in order to do a topic justice, I would like to make sure that I'm going as deep as possible for at least this endeavor. Now, this is just comprehensive exams. I know that it only scratches the first inch of the surface of what I need to do. But for me, it was really important for me to use this list as a springboard into my dissertation because that's the next milestone. I often get a little touchy when I think about the word efficiency in research because it kind of seems blasphemous, but I just can't help it. I really want to make sure that I am creating a cumulative experience so that I don't have to double back more than I actually need to. At this point in my academic career, I do have two potential topics for my dissertation that I'm really excited about. And so I am pretty eager to get moving towards that. And I do think between the topics, I am on the right path. Obviously I'm not wed to any of these things. I can change my mind at any time. I just don't want to. <laughs> I think that it's gonna be really important for me, especially looking towards my third year to start going out, going to conferences and talking about my ideas to wider circles. And in order for me to actually do that, I need to stick the landing here. I need to get to the point where I am fleshing out ideas so that I don't embarrass people when I go and speak on behalf of my university. It shouldn't just be about other people. And it's not, it's just, I know for me, I have a high tolerance for failure and that is okay. I'll just get up and do something else. But when I have other people <laughs> who are associated with me, then that kind of feels a little, a little daunting to, to not make sure that I'm putting my best foot forward so that I can represent everyone really well. That's just, that's just how I feel currently. I wanted to let you in on this particular step in my PhD journey. I've said before that I've learned that it's really important to take you along the journey so that you can understand what this life is like and see if it's something that you would be up for. And I've been recently really inspired by Tayama Aaron. I really enjoy her channel because she is putting it all out there as well. And that's great. I think it's really important for us to share what this journey is like, especially because there's a lot of underrepresentation of people who look like me in these halls. And the more that we can share and encourage each other to really reach for their biggest dreams, no matter the obstacles, the better. And the more that we can be real about what it's like, it's just the better prepared we can be as we go through it. That's why I create these videos to help you along every step of this journey.